Hello and welcome to the GV8 on Grossim TV. We are 30 miles southeast of London in Kent, England for rounds three and four of the GV8 championship season. We are at Brands Hatch GP configuration this week for two 20 lap races. With me in the booth is Matt Gelder. Matt, how are you doing today? Oh, not too bad. We are in for an exciting bunch of racing today. We have a very tight course in. We are got some very close races in the standings. Tell me what we are going to be looking for in this upcoming race, Matt. Biggest thing is for everybody to stay out of trouble. This this course is really tight for these V8 cars, and it's not very narrow, and it's really narrow. So it's going to be passing opportunities are going to be really really slim. So everybody's going to have to stay on their toes and try to. Stay on the, the tarmac, stay on the grass. That will be the challenge. There's going to be a fair amount of give and take. You have to be willing to give some room uh, here occasionally. Uh, we don't have the width that we've had in the last race where we were uh, at most sport. A little bit wider track. It is difficult in its own way. It's a beautiful day here. It's partly cloudy. It's a little bit cool. But it's definitely going to be some interesting races. And the car should have no problem with cool pavement today. Uh, last week, Nigel Baines took, I believe, both races. Am I correct in that? Yes, I, I believe you are right on that on that one, Joe. Yeah, he, uh... Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I believe you are right on that one. Okay, and last week, Farouk Manzar took the pole. Looks like he will repeat it, at least it looks like it so far that today. He is leading uh, the qualifying runs by two tenths of a second over Nigel Baines. Should be some very interesting, very tight racing. I want to uh, get your impressions of the season so far, Matt. Uh, with these, just with the first week, uh, it's pretty much up for anybody's game that I can tell. Um, there's a lot of good guys that have had problems in the first uh, first week that still need to make a stand and. There's a, there's a lot of open opportunities for just about anybody in this field. That is true. We have Nigel Baines is on top of the standings right now with 288 points. Greg Carr is in second, only 21 points behind. Uh, Manzar is behind him. Sidman behind him. Oliviera, uh, Gerard, Jordan, Lundy, Kraft, Carroll. I mean, the list of, of, of the, you know, the, the, the usual suspects, shall we say, on the list. Everything's really tight so far. How much do you think these drivers are still adapting to the open setups that we have included in the GV8 this season? I know a lot of people are really happy about this open setup. Uh, I know Bruce Manzar is one of them that he was he was struggling a little bit with the fix setups. It's with hard open... to believe Farouk Manzar would be struggling with anything. That's that's true. He is an animal when he gets behind the wheel and can drive the wheels off just about anything. But it essentially it makes the cars drivable each individual driver so it makes it a lot easier i know there's a few guys that are probably a little hesitant about trying to mess with the setup because they probably don't have a lot of experience with it but with with the gv with the gra and the gv8 series there's always people that'll help you out so it's it's not too big of a deal but yeah with open setups it makes a world of difference on how these cars drive I, that, I, I couldn't have said it any better myself, and especially when you are dealing with for a variety of weather conditions. Now that you know, iRacing has for a while now been able to, it's not dynamic weather, but each race is set to a specific uh, time of day, if you will. And with the adjusting weather conditions, it makes it much easier. Some people will have a harder time when the sun is out and the pavement's colder. They're able now to counter that effect a little bit especially on tracks like this where you're going to have a really really tight corners uh, i know druids is going to be really tight that's going to be very exciting as they come down at, uh, the paddocks for the first time and come around druids always always a traffic jam there uh, cooler weather can definitely make that a lot scarier as as the brakes and the tires are, are a little bit colder uh, as we continue on here with uh, the qualifying farouk manzar is on top with baines right behind uh, as we go down the list, it does look like we have Martin Carroll, Greg Carr, Sidman, Klusterman, Jordan, Girard, Heron, Myers, Hebron, Smith, and Oliviera. 
are completing the 13 cars so far competing today in the GV8 at Brands Hatch GP. Are other things to look for, Matt? Uh, biggest thing is everybody needs to know. We already covered on it, but everybody needs to be really careful on this track. Essentially, one little lapse in judgment will put you into the wall and out in the grass. So, essentially, it, well, it's a it's a little it's a little bit of a mind game, essentially, for even this even the first race. The first race will tell them exactly what they need to do for the second race. So this is more of a test race to see how everybody's going to react to this narrow course and how the weather conditions are going to affect it. And in the second race, I believe it, we do have a, uh, a four-tire stop, is it? Yeah, mandatory four-tire stop and the rolling start, which the first race will have a standing start. So, unlike like last week, this, that rolling start, I think everybody's got adjusted to it because last season it was all standing starts. So, I think everybody's adjusted to it. And so, hopefully, we won't have any any minor minor collisions or anything that we had happen in the first race of or the second race of last week. I want to take a second to mention uh, GetDirtyMX.com, the, the GV8, the broadcasts, the, everything, uh, they, they help bring it to you. They also are, uh, they sponsor Youth of America, they, uh, people who are in Mount Motocross and need help to, to make their dreams come true. They are a way of organizing uh, funds to help these kids pursue these careers and, and who knows we could have the next motocross champion on our hands and you could help support his career by just showing a little bit of love and and swinging by and checking him out definitely that's getdirtymx.com uh, the rolling starts Matt I want to ask real quick is there going to be a lot of adjustment between a rolling start and a standing start is there going to be that big of a difference going into paddocks for the first time biggest thing is you're going to have your essentially you're carrying more speed with the rolling start because you're already going to be doing probably at least 50 or 60 miles an hour i'm not sure what the rolling start is for this track so at least you're carrying probably at least another 40 miles an hour in the paddocks compared to the first start because the first start your start from a standing start you're starting at zero a dead stop so you're going to carry that much more speed so everybody's going to have to figure or just it's like okay we're carrying this much more speed on colder on cold tires and cold brakes so we need to kind of adjust because on a standing start by the time they come around again uh, carrying that much speed at least the tires and the brakes are a little bit warm so they have a little bit more control over the car I would imagine it also is a little different with all cars actually rolling at the same speed unlike a uh, standing start where you might have somebody who just blows it off the start misses a gear whatever and now you've got three guys clumped together coming into paddocks for the first time that can be scary that way maybe this with the rolling start kind of helps stretch things out just a little bit and keeps everybody from being bunched up although with the speed as you mentioned it could uh, be a little bit hairier coming around there i'm i'm really excited to see how they're going to take these first couple of turns i'm always always just enjoy watching them come around druids it's a fun corner to watch especially at the start of a race and with these cars and this power it's going to be a spooky corner uh, uh, impressions on the track from you Matt uh, favorite corners least favorite corners places to watch good passing zones what, what do you have to say about uh, Brands Hatch GP I personally love this track I've never driven it in the in the in the super cut on the supercars but uh, in the, the Kias, it's so much fun in the Kias. But the Kias are a little bit smaller, a little bit less power, so you can, a little bit more different kind of driving strategy for this track. Uh, I believe the big passing opportunities are gonna be down the, I guess you could call it the side stretch, going down into the, the back side of the track. That's where, uh, essentially, I have a feeling that when they're coming, the get start, when they start heading down, whoever can jump out of that last corner heading down that straight. Is going to be that's where the majority of the passes is going to be done. That is a, that is a tricky place. Not it, it won't throw you into a wall, but it can definitely scrub time off of you off of your lap right there. And and I've in both real life and in sim racing, I've seen some very close finishes at this track because that is such a great last combination of, of corners. Uh, if you go back just to corners before that. You have that really wicked right-handed corner um, as you come out of the the GP section of the of the Brands Hatch configuration here. 
that has been a problem for every series that we've had here. We've had collisions in <laughs> way back when we were running the Jettas in the GTCC. That's another place that I think that is going to be a very interesting place to watch today. Yeah, I agree with it. That corner is that corner is it can get you off guard if you're not paying attention to your braking zones. Essentially, you could be flying into that, and if you miss your braking zone even by a couple feet, it'll throw you way off in that corner. And essentially, you got to try to gather it back up before you lose a bunch of spots. All right, yeah, that's that is a very very good point, Matt. I want to run quickly down through the qualifying time so far. We do have Farouk Manzar on top with a minute 27.391. Nigel Baines is right behind him at 127.5. Mark Carroll is at 128.2. Greg Carr is at 128.5. Glenn Sidman, the silent stalker, is at 128.9. Behind them we have Tony Klusterman, Nils Jordan, Mario Girard, uh, Joe Oliveira, Kyle Heron, Peter Hebron, Mark Myers, J.D. Smith, Kane Craft, and Val DePietro, a newcomer, I believe, to the GV8. I do not believe I've seen him here before. No, I believe he uh, he just signed up for the last middle of last week. So, yeah, he's a, he's a new face. I believe he's going to be running in our uh, Super Cup also. So, yeah, he's a new face to the GRA. Fantastic. It's great to have you aboard, Val. We look forward to seeing you in many, many more races to come. Enjoy it, buddy. This is your first time at the GV8. It's always an interesting run. I've been there. I've done the GV8 last season. It was, it was, a, it was a very fun car to race. It was a handful. Unfortunately, I've got too many things to do. Too many cars I want to drive. I didn't have the time to, to commit to the car. But it lets me be in the booth with with Matt Gelder as well. My name is Joe Odell. I don't believe I've said that yet. So this is that's me here. Uh, we are counting down to the end of qualifying. I'm going to have Matt, when they do qualify, run through the grid. Okay, so yeah, I'll do that. And looks like qualifying's got another 25 seconds or so. So it uh, looks like the first top five are within a second and a half of each other, which is pretty, pretty good. So this is going to be really interesting who can get through these first couple laps really clean. And there are several cars, looks like three or four of them all within about a second of each other after that, so it should be a very good race. Alright, looks like they're starting to grid up. So we got Farouk Manzar on the pole with Nigel Bain second, Martin Carroll third, Greg Carr fourth, Glenn Sidman fifth, Tony Klusterman sixth, Niels Jordan, 7th, Mario Gerard, 8th, Joel Ovalaria, excuse me, Joel, Joel, ninth, Kyle Heron, 10th, Peter Hebron, 11, Mark Myers, 3rd, J.D. Smith, 13th, Thomas Kraft, Kane Kraft, 14th, Val, finishing 15th. And that will round out the grid for us. We are getting very close to going uh, lights out. Yeah, now is the time to relax. Uh, just try to keep a mental image of uh, who's around you and what their driving styles is and uh, pull the belts tight and it's time to go. A lot of the never quit MS racing team at the front of the of the grid this, this week in race one. We also have the Mazden Spotty Dog uh, teams being represented there as well, and Road Shark Racing a little bit farther back, but I have to pull for my guys in Road Shark. Yeah, the looks like there's a pretty even split between uh, the Never Quit and uh, the SDC guys in the top and within the top five or six. So this is going to be pretty good. Motors are revving. We are close to going. Green here at Brands Hatch, GP, round three. We are underway, and they are down the front straightaway, heading towards the paddock turn for the first time. And it looks like everybody is going to get through, maybe a little bit wide. Nope, everybody is going to make it through, Matt. Yeah, it looks like...
looks like uh, Nigel Baines is uh, fighting with Groog. Going to see, it looks like Groog's going to hold on. Yep, he comes out with it so far. Oh, here comes Nigel, he's fighting right back. Oh, Nigel takes the lead out of Farouk. Oh, that's pretty close on his bumper, though. We'll see what he can do in the, this next coming up corner. We have the Mastin Spotty Dog and the Never Quit Racing are running one, two, three, four, and five. You can see it right there. They are extremely close as they head down the GP section of the Brands Hatch racetrack. Looks like uh, Kyle Heron's off the track. He just got in the grass, got a little spun out. He's back on the track now. That is good to see. And they are now coming up to the turn we were talking about. Very dangerous corner here. We'll see if everybody can navigate this. And it looks like everybody is through. We have Farouk Manzar in the lead. He's in front of Nigel Baines. Martin Carroll is running behind him as they are coming to the end of lap number one. Yeah, it looks like everybody's pretty spread out and pretty much just kind of falling in line and uh, we'll s just trying to find the groove. So now's the time just to kind of figure out how the car's handling, what's who's around you, and uh, see how hard you can push these next couple laps without trying to run off the road. Excuse me, Nigel Baines is in the lead. He is in front. We are now on board with Farouk Manzar. Looking forward to Nigel Baines in first place. Farouk is in second. Behind him is Martin Carroll. Then there is a bit of a space between him and I believe that's Greg Carr back there, Matt. Yeah, it looks like Niels is uh, hes not too far behind uh, Frug there. We're gonna, looks like he's just kind of biding his time, see if he can, just kind of see if he can get in mind games with Frug there. He's just kind of hanging around. As they are starting to spread out just a little bit, we are now looking at Mario Girard in the Road Shark Racing, number 27. He is back a ways. I believe he's in ninth position. He is in a battle with Jao Oliveira right in front of him. Yeah, the front three are still... Uh, still Nigel, Farouk, and Martin. They're, uh, all three of them are actually separated by a second and a half, so they're all pretty, They're all pretty much pacing themselves right now. That is Jao Oliveira in front of Mario Girard. Yeah, uh, Nigel just went off, just got off in the grass. Farouk's going to try to get, he's closed up on his bumper, see if he can get this pass done. Uh, he's trying to get down on the inside. No, it looks like Nigel's going to put it off. That is fortunate for Nigel Baines. Farouk had a chance that you don't get a lot of those at this track. You have to capitalize when you get them. However, it is a tight track. Keep pressuring them. You might just be able to get your time to come. As we have Nigel Baines being followed by Farouk Manzar, followed by Martin Carroll, the spotty dog, Marsden, surrounding the Never Quit Racing team. We have Baines, Manzar, Carroll, Carr, the silent stalker, Glenn Sidman in fifth place, Nils Jordan behind him in sixth, Ja Oliveira in seventh, Mario Girard in eighth, Peter Hebron in ninth, Val DiPietro in his debut on the GV8 is running in tenth place. Very impressive to see him in the top ten. Thomas Kane Craft is in 11, Tony Klusterman in 12, Mark Myers 13th, J.D. Smith in 14th, and Kyle Heron is running in 15th. We are on board with Kane Kraft as he looks forward to Val DiPietro in front of him, the number 16 car. In 10th position, Kane is in 11th. He is being followed by Tony Klusterman in 12th position as they head towards the Paddock Bend. Yeah, something must have held, held up Tony, because he started, I believe, in 7th, 6th or 7th, but now he's dropped all the way back to 11th, so... Oh, he's on the collision. inside, and he makes contact. He makes contact with... I didn't catch who did he hit. 
uh, Tony uh, kind of dove inside, and I was inside of Kane, and Kane kind of came Kane. down on top of him. So I don't know if he saw him. So we'll, we'll watch this replay, see if we can uh, see what happened. Looks like he just got a little bit off track, was on the inside, everybody got a little squirrely, contact was made, that is unfortunate. You hate to see that type of thing, but it, it was just, it was incidental contact, so, I mean, if anything, at least we have that. Yeah, that's that's true too. Uh, looks like J.D. Smith is uh, caught up to uh, Mark Myers, is probably within a half second or a second or so, he's gonna see if he can get this, get closer and get some path going. That's good to see. J.D. Smith was in the booth last year. Many of you do know him. He was in the booth. Oh, oh he Mark is. Just spun. Mark Myers spins in front of him. They make contact. That corner is a very dangerous corner. It is terrible corner. We are going to go to replay of that. That is unfortunate. J.D., I'm sorry we called you out. And there it was. That was the cursed. And yeah, from one broadcast to another, I apologize. <laughs> Yeah, Mark, it looks like Mark just got off in the grass and spun around and JD just kind of accidentally followed him in there. So I don't think it was any fault of JD's. Mark just kind of went in a little too wide there. No, he had nowhere to go. There was nowhere for him. He spun right in front of him. We have Mario Girard getting next to Oliveira. I know there was a little bit of contact. They both managed to stay on track as they head down the hill and into the long right-hander. There was a little bit of contact. Both men were able to maintain control of their vehicles. All kinds of excitement all over the track today, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, back up front, Farouk has actually caught back up to Nigel. He's about a half second off his back bumper, so uh, he's trying to gain. But uh, I don't know. Nigel might have a handful here in the next lap or so. Just a incredible racing here at Brands Hatch. The GP configuration, this is round three of the GV8, uh, brought to you by Grassim TV and dirt, GetDirty.com, or GetDirtyMX.com, excuse me. Kanecraft is in the pits. Uh, did you see what happened, Matt? I think it was uh, contact from before, I believe, but I didn't, he didn't appear to have any major damage to his car, so I'm not sure exactly why he's in there. That is unfortunate. He was actually having a really good day. He's, he's took a season off last season. He was also in the booth with JD. He's been having a little bit of uh, he's been having a little bit of the bad luck lately. Looked like he was doing very well today. You hate to see him in there in this race, but uh, he'll get back out. I know him. He's he's a competitor, and he, I I can see him definitely uh, trying to make up this lap here. We go to Mario Girard chasing Oliviera in the 777 car. Uh, these two have been chasing each other for several laps now. It's a very good race, and Mario's made contact with him once. Mario's a very safe driver. Uh, it's been, oh, he almost went wide there. It's been a great, I've been watching this one for about two laps now, Matt, and it's been great. Yeah, as they're doing, as uh, Mario and Jao are fighting, Nils is just, he's pulling away now. He was, uh, he, they were a little bit closer to him when they started fighting, but now, uh, now they're letting Nils just get away from him. Jao ended up getting a, a penalty, it looked like. He might have cut a little bit. He had to slow down, let Gerard by. Uh, yeah, uh, that that's corner there is, You uh, hate to see that. That corner there is really bad for if you're getting even two wheels down in that that rumble strip that'll mark you for a slowdown. We are back up front following Farouk Manzar. He, uh, he is following Nigel Baines, excuse me. There is less than a second between the two men. They have pulled out in front of Martin, Marty Carroll by 4.6 seconds, and Carroll has made distance between himself and Greg Carr in fourth position. Glenn, the silent stalker, Sidman, is pressuring Greg Carr a little bit for fourth place. That is how they run, one through five at the moment. I have to imagine that Farouk is going to be happy to just follow Nigel for at least the next couple of laps. We have a 20-lap race 
we are definitely not even halfway through the race yet. So I can't imagine he's going to put too much pressure on and only make the pass if it's really, really an obvious one. Uh, it would be a lot uh, to ask to, to do something that this, bleh, that this early in the race. Yeah, I, I think Farouk's just, just being patient and biding this time. Looks Every once in a while, I, I'll see Sid... Oh, Nigel's just about got sideways. Nigel kind of gets out of the corners and, and gets a little wiggle. Just like that, he was trying to almost sideways there. So I think if Farouk, all he's waiting for is just, just biding this time and see if he can get Nigel to make a mistake. It I, makes you wonder if maybe his tires are scrubbing out a little bit, or if the setup is getting to him, or or something like that. We are going to go to Kyle Heron now. He is running a... Uh, excuse me, Peter Hebron we're going to go to. He is running right behind Val DiPietro. This is the battle for ninth place, Matt. Yeah, our uh, our newcomer for Val is uh, he's been on a heck of a show here. He's he's running half back just about. And, uh, Peter, oh Peter, spinning. Oh come on, Pete. Oh, looks like uh, Tony's gonna go by him. Hopefully he can get it straightened out. But yeah, it looked like Peter was uh, was catching him, and then he just spun out, just kind of got a little sideways there, and just uh, let it run on the grass. At least he didn't hit anything, so that's kind of a good thing. And yeah, he was able to collect it. He almost caught the railing there, but he did get it back under control. He is running uh, in now 11th place. That would put Klusterman in 10th, and Val DiPietro still... Oh, almost gets a little uh, little squirrely there. Has a major moment. Uh, makes me wonder if the tires are starting to get scrubbed away from some of these cars, or is the pavement ha causing a problem, Matt? What, what do you think on this? I'm thinking that they're, uh, the tires are starting to get, they're not at their, their optimal te temperature now. Now they're starting to fade on the other side. So now it all kind of depends on how they're pushing the setup too and how they have their setup done. So some guys some guys are, being out, are able to handle it, like Nigel and Farouk, but uh, it seems like some of the other guys are having a little bit of problem. It is getting to be uh, fairly dangerous out there as we go to the front of the pack again. We have Nigel Baines out in front of Farouk Manzar. This has been going on for almost since the very beginning of the race. These two pulling out very slowly in front of Marty Carroll in third place. Now they're 5.6 seconds. So in about two laps they've made about almost a half a second up on Marty Carroll. And then there is about a six second, five and a half, six second gap back to Greg Carr in fourth, and Glenn Sidman in fifth. That's the top five. We have Jordan, Gerard, Oliviera, DiPietro, Klusterman, Hebron, Heron, Myers, J.D. Smith on the lead lap, and Kane Craft is a lap down in 15th. I hate to see that, Kane. We hope you have that better race next in about, uh, about a half an hour from now. We are getting close to the halfway point of the race now. We have Nigel Baines running just in front of Farouk Manzar. They are catching up to some traffic that looks like Kyle Heron getting out of the way, letting the two leaders by. And it looked like there might have been Peter Hebron up in front that they will have to contend with shortly. That's, uh, that's J.D. Smith that they're coming up on, and then just in front of him is going to be Mark Myers. Okay, uh, sorry about that. I Somewhere I lost Peter Hebron along the way. <laughs> he is MIA. There we go. I, that definitely is uh, J.D. Smith up there as they are catching up. Two lap traffic and just about to complete the halfway point of the race here at Brands Hatch GP. This is the GV8 on Grossim TV, brought to you by GetDirtyMX.com. Uh, this is the GV8. Now, I don't think JD is gonna let his teammate get caught up behind him, so I think he's just gonna let him go and, uh, so he doesn't get help, so uh, doesn't give Frug an opportunity to get around him here. 
Yeah, I would have to imagine JD is going to. He's he's a good sport. He is, I imagine, going to be getting out of the way here as soon as he is able to, and let both uh, Nigel and Farouk get by. Uh, I would imagine as well the uh, Mark Myers will do the same, and it looks like he will. That JD and Mark are actually fighting for position, so uh, that might actually be. Uh they're pretty close now. They're actually almost side by side. As J.D. Smith to the inside, he is trying to make the corner. This is, I believe, the battle for 12th place here. 11th place, excuse me. Oh, Mark. Oh, they're both off. Both go wide. Both men go wide around the corner. Oh, and Myers being almost losing it again. He's able to collect it. J.D. Smith to the inside, Kyle Heron trying to split the uprights. Oh. Ends up going wide and right into the fence. How unfortunate. Uh, he was putting his nose in between the two and he got caught. We are going to replay. Matt, bring us through this. That was uh, actually, that Kyle was actually coming up. Yeah, that was actually for position two. And uh, Kyle was going to sneak through the middle of him. Looks like he just got, I don't know what happened if he some reason he just stepped on the gas, the tire spun, he just turned right into Mark and got spun around. It looked like there might have been just a just a tad of contact there and with the rear wheel drive of these cars and the power at that time coming out of a corner, it's entirely possible that it just grabbed him and took him to the right because he slammed hard. We hope he's okay. We hope that he'll be able to get the car together for the second race that's coming up. And just some exciting racing here at Brands Hatch. But in all that chaos, JD actually won't got the got the spot. He's actually now in eleventh. JD Smith is in eleventh. Mark Myers is behind him. I have Tony Klusterman following them as well. All those men are a lap down. Well, it looks like Farouk caught up to Nigel and all that bit of midst of that chaos. He's right on Nigel's bumper again. They come around the dangerous last corner of Brands Hatch to complete lap number 12. We have Nigel Baines out in front of Farouk Manzar by three tenths of a second. Then we have 8.7 seconds back to Marty Carroll in third, Greg Carr in fourth, and Glenn the Silent Stalker in fifth place. He is definitely catching up to Greg Carr. There may be a challenge for fourth place. Looks like Nigel Baines is starting to get a little bit wider in his corners. He's getting to, uh, looks like his tires really might be uh, catching up to him now, Matt. He's taking the corners a lot slower, and he looks like he's sliding a little bit. Yeah, Farouk sliding slight a little bit, too. It looks like they're both pushing it pretty hard, but I think I think Nigel's just playing a defensive role. He's just trying to take up as much racetrack as possible. He's, I, it's, it's close, but I think Nigel is a little bit, I think his tires are a little bit farther down. You look at Farouk, he's still got, he's still very collected. Nigel is sliding around in front of him. I think he's fighting the car, whether it's the tires or the setup. And, oh, they're going to catch up to someone else here and almost, he almost went off. Yeah, that was about, that was good of him to, to get out of the way there. That's kind of a bad spot to be stuck behind the, the stuck, or stuck in front of the leader. Sorry about that. We like to see that kind of driving. Val, if you continue to drive like that, you are most definitely welcome in every league that the GRA runs. I want to take I want to take a second to remind everybody that this is the GRA, the Global Racing Association. We bring several different uh, series to, to our racing league. Definitely come out and check us out. It's at grasim.us. Uh, we are with Nigel Bates, being followed by Farouk Mansar. He's now seven tenths of a second behind him, and Nigel's still looking like he's fighting the car, Matt. Yeah, it looks like it, but but Farouk lost a little bit of time that last lap. He lost four tenths there, so I don't know if he got a little slippery in a couple corners, or, or if Nigel just put down that grid of a lap and uh, try to fight him off. We have also farther back, we have a great battle going on with Mario Girard and Jao Oliveira. Uh, they've been 
push each other just as long as Baines and Manzar have been fighting up in front here. Uh, down this, this has been just great racing all the way down. This is exactly what we thought this was going to be. Just tight racing. We are on board here now with Oliviera. Uh, he's looking forward to Mario Girard. This is this is the exciting racing we were looking forward to in the GV8, Matt. Oh yeah, this is this is the race that I was hoping that was going to be for this this first one. It'd be nice tight racing with little packs and. Uh, this is uh, and not a lot of wrecks, so just have a few offs with a few cars, but it looks like everybody's still running. Yeah, I, I do believe the only one that we saw was uh, when Mark Myers, basically he just spun on his own in front of Smith. He had nowhere to go, but other than that, I do believe that was the only, the only accident. As you see, Mario Girard has got around Jao Oliveira. That happened uh, about a lap ago, I believe as they are catching up to, uh, I believe that is lap traffic in front of them as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that is Tony Klusterman. and he's a uh, lap down in uh, 13, so that, uh, that's not for position there. But Tony Tony's Klusterman. actually trying to uh, catch Mark Myers, which is uh, just a corner ahead of him, so he's going to see if he can uh, catch up to Mark and get 12. You hate to see Tony Klusterman this far back. He's, he got bit. Uh, the last races we had at Mosport, he he was just catching all the black flags. He was or not black flags, but the time penalties. Excuse me. Uh, I believe he told me he made seven of them. Uh, I, I mean, it's just hard to come back from that. And now today, I believe he may have caught another time penalty, which set him farther back. It's just it's a shame to see that because he is a good driver. He's just had some trouble. I believe it was Mark Myers facing the wrong way. Am I right? Uh. Yeah, it looks like it was. I don't didn't quite see what happened to him. You hate to see that. But, I, I mean, it's, it's still early. He can collect it. He can get it ready for the next race. Looks like Girard may have gone a little bit wide, and Oliviera may have been catching up to him. I don't see where Girard went. Yeah, Farouk just closed up on Nigel's bumper. I don't know if he slipped coming down in turn one. Got, got off in the grass or got off the gravel there but he is on his butt now he is trying he's pushing his hardest to get by, get around him what great racing still everywhere we are on lap 16 battles up and down the, the grid everywhere you look there are cars this is a great race up front he's three tenths of a second in front of Farouk the machine man czar Nigel Baines trying for another victory Nigel Baines is leading in the standings right now uh, Farouk Manzar is in third place. He is back by 36 points. This would be great. Make up a couple of uh, points in the, in the in the standings. This could this could come back at the end of the season. These these beginning races seem to be there's all the time in the world. But these are the races that later in the season. These are the ones that count, man. Oh yeah, it's every. Uh... Especially every every race counts to these drivers, but even if they have a bad bad couple of races, and we got our drop our drops for uh, for the season. But yeah, every driver wants to do his best, so he doesn't have to take that drop if he doesn't need to. We continue to watch Nigel Baines out in front of Farouk Manzar now by one half second. They are starting lap 17 of this 20 lap race. This is the first of two uh, races today. Again, you see Baines getting a little squirrely coming around Truitz. He's having problems there. I think that's his line. I, I, I'm pretty sure that that's just the line that he prefers. For some reason, it seems to be pretty quick and in, in Fruits only catching up maybe a tenth or so right there, but it seems to be working for him. It does seem like he is running maybe a little bit wide, and then Farouk kind of pulls him back up here as they come down the hill. It's it's interesting how these setups have allowed the drivers to adjust to their style, and it's opened up, at least in my mind, many more lines. Even on a tight track like this, you might not think that there are that many lines, maybe not to pass, but still to put down a quick lap. There are different ways to do it. It looks like somebody might be in the dust in front of them. That that uh that was Jay, uh, that was Kane Kraft it looks like that spun out there but uh didn't look like uh they were affected by it by any means he was far enough off the road again it, I, it, i'm thinking the tires must really be being eaten up on the track 
we're really starting to see a lot of people go get a little squirrely around corners. We go on board with Farouk Manzar. He's looking forward to Naya Jill Baines in the 36. Uh, Mazden Spotty Dog uh, racing team car up in front of them. This is a race for first and second place, and that is lap traffic in front of them. Looks like J.D. Smith again, but uh, I think I don't think he's going to let his uh, teammate uh, mess his teammates race up, especially with Farouk right on his, on his back bumper there. JD, always the courteous driver, gets out of the way, lets the leaders have their race. We appreciate that, JD. I won't mention you too much here because last time I did, you had somebody go out in front of you. So we go back to Nigel Baines, being uh, out in front of Farouk Manzar. Uh, looks like, gee, well, you can see it's right there. I don't have to tell you how close they are. Then we go back almost 14 seconds to third place, Marty Carroll. Behind him, uh, looks like almost another 13 seconds back from him is Greg Carr. And behind him is Glenn the Silent Stalk Stalker Sidman. I'm going to run down really quick. In sixth is Jordan. Seventh is Oliviera. Eighth is Gerard. Ninth, Hebron. Tenth, DiPietro. Eleventh uh, is Myers. Twelfth is Klusterman. Thirteenth is Smith, Heron, and Kraft. Uh, everybody from Heron, uh, Hebron down uh, is a lap down. But Farouk is making his move. He is side by side going down the front stretch. Coming into the first corner is Scott. Farouk's going to take it. Nigel just let it and wasn't going to mess with him going in that first corner. He's going to try to battle back here coming up uh, the top of the hill here. Oh, he's coming on the outside. Let's see if Farouk's going to hold him off. See if he's going to double, if he's going to cross underneath. Oh, Farouk sideways. Come on. Let's see if Ni Oh, Nigel's going to dive back inside. And Nigel, I think, has got. Oh, there's a little contact. Let's see if they're going to. Nigel took it. Nigel Baines goes back out in front of Farouk Manzar. That was a great little exchange as they come down the front and through. Oh, oh, and Farouk Manzar able to, he has a moment, he's able to collect it. This is incredible racing. This is lap 19 of a 20 lap race. This is first and second place. This is incredibly exciting stuff. This is exactly the GVA we love, Matt. Love oh, it. Oh yeah, very, very good racing. Hopefully, uh, oh. Hopefully they can keep it together here for this one more lap and see if they can fight it all out. They will be collecting the white flag as they come across the start-finish line for what should be an incredible last lap. You have to think that Manzar is collecting himself. He's going to make a run. I have to imagine it's coming up at Druid's mat. I think you're right, but I don't know if he's going to be far enough to even pull off a, a, a move here. He's, uh, yeah, he's almost half second behind unless Nigel messes up and gets a little slip here coming up. As they come towards Druids, does not look like he's going to have enough steam to get it done. He will, however, close up on him. If he can keep it together, he may be able to make a move. No, he's going to be just far enough back. He is right on his bumper, though, Matt. This is going to be a very exciting last half lap. Yeah, we'll see what this corner does because this is the corner where most of the past. And if he can get, if Fru can get enough run, he'll get him down the front stretch. But let's see. If, it doesn't look like he Fru got a little wiggle there. I don't think he's going to have enough speed. As we head down the hill one last time into these this double, well, actually I suppose a triple right hander, uh, two of them in succession here. That is lap traffic out in front of him. I believe that is Mark Myers. I knowing Mark, I'm sure he will get out of the way. We have first and second place with just a quarter lap to go. Go ahead and bring us to the end of the race, Matt. Oh, they're both sideways coming around there. Let's we'll see if we can do, see if Nigel can hold them off. They're just sliding all over the place. These tires are shot. Let's we'll see if Farouk can make this run before this last, uh, last little right-hander here. I don't think he's going to do it there, Joe. I think uh, Nigel's going to hold him off. They're both sideways coming around this corner. He's uh, making his move. He's sticking to the inside. Farouk sticking his nose in there. How close is he going to get? No, Farouk just backed off. Just let him have it. That was very close. It was one-tenth of a second difference between the two men as they come across the line. We went 20 laps, and it was one by one-tenth of a second. What a race that was. Marty Carroll comes across in third. 
Greg Carr will come across in fourth. Glenn Sidman will come across in fifth. Looks like six is going to be Niels Jordan. Seventh, Jail Oliveira. Eighth, Mario Girard. Ninth, Peter Hebron. Tenth, our newcomer Val that came, comes in tenth. Nice, he gets a top ten in his Virgin Voyage of the GV8. That is a bunch of these for you there, as they are now parking at the bottom of Paddock Corner. That was an incredible race, Matt. That was absolutely fantastic. That that last two laps was crazy. I I it was anybody's race essentially. Uh, Nigel came off that last corner a little wide, a little slippery, and that's how Fru got the run on him. But Nigel just battled back. He never gave up on it, and just. Uh, Good job by Nigel for his win. That was a great race. Let me go through the results here real quick. We have Nigel Baines, the series leader so far, grabbing a win. He is in front of second place. Farouk Manzar wins by one-tenth of a second. Third place is Marty Carroll. Fourth place is Greg Carr. Fifth place, Glenn Sidman. Sixth is Nils Jordan. Seventh is Jao Oliveira. Eighth is Mario Girard. Ninth, Peter Hebron. Tenth, newcomer Val de Petro. Eleventh place, Tony Klusterman. Twelfth, Mark Myers. Thirteenth, Kyle Heron. Fourteenth, J.D. Smith. And rounding out the field is Kane Craft. That was uh, a great race. We are going to bring Marty Carroll in. Want to talk to him? What? What would you like to say to Marty? That was a great race. Are you there, Marty? Yeah, I got you. That was that was a crazy race. Uh, how did you uh, actually? Ha it looked like the, the the start wasn't too bad for you. It just slowly, slowly, just started a little farther behind from Frug and Nigel. I thought you were going to catch up there, but it seemed like uh, they were just a little bit too, a little bit faster than you, and you couldn't quite make it. Oh, yeah, the start was uh, incredible, and I knew I had to, to get a jump on Farouk uh, early, and Nodge, if I wanted to have any chance of winning this race, um, Nodge is just driving unbelievable at the moment, and um, I'm glad to have him on board, and hopefully he can lift my game up again, and I can get back uh, at the pointy end there with him. Yeah, that was a uh, great, great run by Nigel. He won by one-tenth of a second over Farouk. That was a... If you were up here in the broadcast booth, we were shouting and yelling the last two laps. That was a that was a great race by them too. Yeah, I was just actually just having a quick debrief with uh, Nigel there and uh, and going back and have a look and uh, oh, he made an unbelievable pass to get that uh, position back on lap 19 and oh, both of, both of those guys are just unbelievable and um, you know it's good to see that uh, we dusted our gloves off from last week and got the argy bargy out of the way and you know it's good hard solid clean racing again. Oh yeah, the yeah the little debacle from uh, last week seemed seems like that was kind of up in the air for a little while, but it seems like everything's resolved. So that's everybody can move on now, and uh, now we got this week to worry about. Yeah, that... definitely. Sorry, go right ahead. Oh, I was just saying, say so, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and uh, good luck to everyone in the in the second race. So just go prepare for that. And uh, thanks again for the broadcast, guys. You do an awesome job. Thank you very much, Marty. That was Marty Carroll. Can't, can't tell you how much we appreciate you swinging by the, the booth. We know you guys got a lot to do to, to get ready for race number two. Uh, really appreciate it. We're bringing in J.D. Smith. Are you, are you there, J.D.? Yeah, I'm here. That was one heck of a race. Tell me what you thought about the start going down into paddocks. Man, that was nuts. Uh, Brands Hatch is an extremely tough race. First of all, I want to apologize to Tony Klusterman. Uh, thought I had him cleared going down in there, and I actually had gotten over on the outside to let Tony pass, and then I was an idiot and decided to get over. I thought I had enough room. Nope. And I just felt terrible. But that was a crazy race, man. Uh, my car, I should have probably pit and got it fixed, but 
I just knew that it cost too much time, so I was like, I oh, will drive a beat up car. Everybody else seems to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looked like the um, tires were really starting to get uh, shredded there at the end. Everybody looked like they were getting a little squirrely around corners. Was that the case, or was it just really slick at the begin with? Uh, the car just wouldn't turn all race, man. It, it, it The car did not want to turn. Uh, it's just really weird. It felt totally different than it did in practice uh, earlier. So I missed a good part of the practice session here, but practice all week, it, it just drove totally different. So I hope in race two will be a little, little better. All right. I just wanted to let you know you ended up finishing in front of uh, your fellow broadcaster, Kane Kraft. Congratulations on, if nothing else, that win, J.D. It's great having you on, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Absolutely, buddy. Well, hopefully we'll get one more race coming up, fellas. Y'all keep up the good work, and we'll talk to you later. Okay, let's go to race winner Nigel Baines. Go ahead, Matt. Nigel, that was a heck of a race, man. That was good driving. <laughs> um, yeah, I forgot the answer to that one. That was pretty awesome. Uh, explain the, group too. I was going to say, explain those last two laps, because it, <laughs> it looked crazy from up here in the booth. Yeah, I, I don't know how bad uh, Farouk was suffering with ties, but the last four or five laps, I felt like it was just suffering, and uh, both ends, front and rear. Um, and uh, I think I just... I understeered into the last turn there. Uh, I think lap just about to start 19, I think, and Fruit got alongside, and I let him have enough room for that one. I tried to get the uh, uh, the cut back, and he covered that, so <laughs> we just kept it going for a few more turns, and I think we did touch, but uh, I think the lightest of touches, if it was. Yeah, it didn't Congrats didn't look like it was uh, too bad there, but uh, yeah, that that was great driving by you and Farouk. That was a that was a heck. You guys that were only separated by one tenth of a second at the end because I looked pretty close there. Farouk was just about on on your uh, just about up to you. Yeah, he uh, he had me for the pass again for sure into turn one. I did the same thing, just plowed under steer into the last turn. And I was like, oh, not now. I think I was lucky to be honest that Mark was there, and I might have picked up a little draft off him. So <laughs> just enough to creep me over the line, I think. That is well. That's that that is the great thing about the last corner at Brands Hatch. Um, my name is my name is Joe Odell. With me is Matt Gelder. You have just got done watching the GV8 Round Three at Brands Hatch GP, brought to you by Grossim TV and GetDirtyMX.com. Don't forget to show them the love. We have race two from Brands Hatch coming up shortly. We will see you there.